Hi YouTube, it's Janely here, also known as Miss Be Helpful. And in this video, I'm gonna go over how your credit score works. I've been getting a lot of um, emails and, and DMs and people who especially are like on the younger side and just getting out of college and stuff are trying to just figure out credit. So I wanted to put a video up here to just put it real, real basic and help you understand how it works. Basically, there's gonna be five categories and in each of these five categories, you can get a certain number of points. And when you add up all the points, the, the highest you can get is 850. That's an 850 credit score, which is considered to be perfect. That's like getting 100% on a test or like an A plus, right? A 4.0 GPA. Now, the lowest that you can get is a 300. So you want to basically stay as far away from 300 as possible and as close as possible to 850. Duh. So basically how you are going to get as close to 850 as possible is by getting as many points as you can in each of the five categories. So what are the five categories? The first one is called payment history. This is going to be where it matters most because you're going to get 35% of all the points you can get right here in this category. And the easiest way to make sure that you always get those full points is to not be late with any of your payments that you have to make. So that means your cell phone bill, that means your credit card, that means your student loans. Anytime you've borrowed money for something like a car loan, you want to make sure that you never send your payment late. Now, if you cannot afford to pay, let's say your whole credit card bill for one month, let's say it's like $300 that you spent on textbooks for the semester, but you don't have the $300 just yet. You're working and you're gonna wait for your next couple paychecks to pay it little by little. That's understandable, but what you need to make sure that you do is at least, at the very least, send the minimum payment due by the due date of that month on your credit card. So that means it might be anywhere from $25 to 40 bucks. You just look at your minimum amount and pay that at the very least by your due date. If you could pay more, always pay more because that helps you avoid interest fees. But if you can't afford to pay the bill, then at least send that minimum because that's gonna give you all the, th the points that you can get in the category for payment history. All right, category number two, I like to call it utilization. I have a whole video about utilization. So if you haven't seen that video yet, I'm gonna put it right up here so you can check that out. Um, it's a pretty popular video because it breaks down utilization into every single little thing you need to know about how to do it. Basically what this category it, it wants from you in order to get the points here is um, that you don't go close to maxing out your credit card. So this is going to be worth 30% of your score and basically what you want to do is only spend a little bit of the money that's available to you on your credit card. Basically you want to make sure that you don't spend a lot and, and my trick for this is divide by 10 then spend because the closer you get to um, not to like one or two percent of spending on your card the better your score is going to be in this category of utilization or amounts owed so you just want to try to spend as little as possible um, and again if you have not seen my utilization video go check that out because I break it down even further and explain all the numbers for you there the third category of your credit is gonna be age of credit and this is gonna be pretty important because it's worth 15% of your score it's the third biggest category and essentially if you want to get all the points in this category what you need to do is make sure that you have a really long age of credit it's kind of like um, I don't know the legal age in the US right like if you're 18 you're legal you can like make decisions for yourself you don't need your parents to tell you what to do but if you're like three or four years old like like there's no way they're gonna let you walk around these streets making decisions by yourself at three or four years old so you need to be older to make decisions for yourself so same thing with your credit card it's better when you have more years the longer you've had credit the better this category is gonna be. But the tricky part about this category is that it's averaged out. So if you had a credit card that you opened five years ago and then you open a credit card this year, you're gonna have five years of credit plus one year of credit, just the card that you opened this year, which is six years, and then they're gonna divide it by two cards to find the average, and so that's gonna be three years. So even though your oldest card is five years old, your your average is gonna be three, and that's what that, that average is what counts for your points in this category. So you just wanna always make sure that you don't go opening new cards like crazy, because it just keeps on lowering your average, and that way you can add, actually build up your age of credit to be pretty long. If you have five or six years, it counts as fair in the category category of age of credit but once you have seven years or more then you're moving up into the category called good or into the score um, zone called good so that means that you'll get the you'll get close to a, the most points that you can get in this section which is worth 15% of your score so you want to make sure that you have you know build it built up to like six seven eight years of credit and then you know try to always keep it at that around that average the second to last category is called new credit which means 
every time that you apply for a new credit, like if you're asking for a student loan or if you're applying for a credit card or if you're applying for a car loan, basically every time you put out an application for credit to get somebody to lend you money or give you money for something, that is going to hurt your credit score. And there's two ways that it can happen is they do a hard inquiry, um, which hurts and takes away like five points from your credit score, sometimes less, but usually around five. Or the, it could be a soft inquiry or a soft check, which does not hurt your credit as much. Um, or actually, this shouldn't really affect your credit unless they do the soft pull and then afterwards they do a hard pull or hard inquiry. So sometimes this is called hard inquiry, sometimes called hard pull or hard check. Soft check, soft inquiry, soft pull, inquiry, pull, check, doesn't matter. Whatever they call it, the point is they're going to pull your records up in order to process your application for credit. And if they see something that they like and they want to approve you, then they approve you. And if not, then it still hurts your credit score. This is the part that matters. A lot of people think that it's only going to be a hard check or a hard pull if the application gets approved, but that's not true. Even if you get denied for credit, that hard inquiry, that hard check is still going to be on your credit score and your credit report. It's going to affect your credit score because it's going to be on your record. So you want to make sure that you're very careful and you don't apply for for new credit and don't put out new applications more than two to three times a year. I would say two to be safe. Three is like if you really desperately needed to that to get that third application out. Maybe like a student loan that you need to go back to school or a consolidation or something. But I really would not push it and do three applications in one year. The last category, like I said, is also 10% of points. And this one is types of credit used. For types of credit used, it is really important that you have a mix of all the different types of credit that you can have. Now, that doesn't mean you should go opening all the different types of credit because that's gonna hurt the other category that we just went over called new applications for credit. So you don't wanna do that. But over time, you wanna be strategic about what applications you're putting out there. If you already have a credit card, you know, before getting a second credit card, maybe you wanna get a student loan or a personal loan because that way you'll have different types of credit. Um, there's Revolve credit, there's installment credit. I have this whole separate video, which I'm going to link right up here that will dive into the types of credit that you want to have. But basically your idea here is that you want to have a healthy mix of all the different types of credit that you could possibly have. And by the end of like, you know, your thirties, um, that's pretty possible. Like at that point, you probably applied for a mortgage. If you're going to get one, you probably have a car loan. If you're going to get one, you probably have a couple credit cards. And if you did go to college and um, take student loans, you probably have that already at that point. So by then you'll, you'll have gotten a little bit of each type of credit. So you don't want to go thinking that you have to do this all when you're like 23 so you can get the best um, score in this category. This one is going to happen slowly over time. But when you open new credit, just be strategic and think, oh, should I get a, if I'm going to get another credit card, should I get a secured credit card or unsecured credit card? I don't really have any secured types of debt yet. Maybe I need to get a secured one, right? Um, and again, if you, if you want to uh, learn more about this category, just click that video that I already posted about all the different types of credit. And that way you can understand a little better how to mix it up with all the different types of loans that, and credit that you can get. Those are the five categories that you need to make sure you understand because they all make up your credit score. And the important thing to know is that one of them can affect the other one too. So it's not just like each individual section is just by its own self. Like if you open a new application for credit, it hurts your application for credit and it also affects your age of credit, right? If you have a late payment on your credit report, that will affect your, um, you know, your record for uh, credit history. And um, if it goes too long, it can become a delinquency, which, you know, could affect a lot of the other categories. And so you just want to make sure that you're paying attention to all of this, like holistically as one piece and not just, you know, each individual section by itself, because they all work together. Um, but I hope that video kind of helped you understand pretty much how the points come together to create your credit score and giving you some ideas of what you can do to make sure that you get the most points in each category and um, what are some steps that you can take to make sure you improve your credit. If you have any questions, definitely put them down in the comment section below. Um, share this video with anybody that you think that it might help because I know credit can seem complicated, but again, I, I think it's just breaking it down to the basic parts and understanding how it works could really help a lot. Um, I post videos every week so you can come back to the channel and check out my videos. You could also find me on social media because I'm on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, all that. Um, at Ms. Be Helpful. And then you can also call me and leave me a, a voicemail message with a specific issue, question, or topic that you want me to cover on my channel. And the number for that is 774-231-8522. You can also email me at MissBeHelpful at gmail.com. And that's all I have for you guys. Till next time, peace.